Welcome everyone to today's webinar titled Digital Transformation in the Telecommunications Industry Using Insight Driven Campaign Data Analytics. It's brought to you by eConsultancy and our partners at Adverity. Now my name is Jim Clark and I'm Commercial Research Director at eConsultancy and Digital Transformation is core to a lot of what we talk about in terms of best practices and trends. So I'm very here to keep very keen to hear more about the about the findings. Now it's my job today to host today's webinar. So before I introduce our speakers, let me first remind you that you're welcome to submit questions throughout the session via the Q&A panel on the screen and our speakers will address these at the end of the session. Um, and the link to the recorded webinar will also be shared after the, after the session should you wish to review the content. Anyway, without further ado, please allow me to introduce our speakers today. I'd like to hand over to Sam and Emiliano. Thanks for that, Jim, and thanks for everybody that's listening in. Um, I'm Sam Madden, VP of Sales at Verity, and I'm joined by one of our favourite customers, Emiliano Bozzi from Vodafone. For those that don't know at Verity, we are an intelligent marketing analytics platform, enabling data-driven marketeers to make better decisions and improve performance, faster and easier. By transforming siloed data into actual insights, at Verity reduced the complexity involved in demonstrating ROI of marketing spend. So that's why I'm here. I've also, as I mentioned, got Emiliano here, who um, has been working for Vodafone for the last couple of years and has a huge amount of uh, experience in the data world from being a data scientist to a data analyst. I believe has a PhD, a master's and a degree in math. So Emiliano, um, over to you to introduce yourself if you can do a better job than I have. Hi Sam, hi Jean, thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me. Um, yes, as you, as you as you said, I joined Vodafone uh, uh, yeah, one year and a half ago, actually, uh, as a digital uh, marketing data analyst. Uh, um, as you know, Vodafone, where is a worldwide player, we operate uh, in uh, four continents, uh, and uh, we deliver tons of uh, impressions and clicks, and we do so many digital uh, campaigns and activities. Uh, we, I mean, we. That, that's 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 our job actually. So we needed this. Fantastic. And I think um, yeah, we haven't got any, we've got the best person available to discuss. I guess the topic today is about some of the pain points in the communications industry. I guess um, a few things to kind of mention right now is there's a huge amount of pressure on this industry. Companies of all sizes in the telco industry need to get ahead of competition by enhancing customer experience especially when it comes to acquisition. Um, it's so easy for customers to chop and change and look for best possible deals. It's really important to understand, I guess, the buyer's journey. I guess it'd be a good place for us to start, Emiliano, is, you know, from your viewpoint, how has marketing in the industry changed over the, over the past five years when it comes to acquisition? Well, we, we can rely for sure on uh, more granular data to create uh, audience and target audience uh, to, to target campaigns in the right direction uh, to prevent the journey acquiring most valuable customers. Uh, uh, that's something that has been enabled in the last uh, few years uh, thanks to all the technologies and the platforms that we are using for our campaigns. Um, there is also um, a growing attention to, to toward us as an industry, as uh, players in this industry, uh, because uh, our products, well, actually our services have become uh, uh, more uh, more needed by by all the people and uh, also by other enterprises. So both in the B two C and in the B two B sectors. So, and um, the usage of our services has increased uh, exponentially. If you think about uh, uh, domestic usage for uh, domotic and uh, IoT and uh, streaming and gaming, uh, while on the other side it has grown also for uh, uh, out of home usage. Uh, we all have a smartphone. We we all uh, use it a lot to do basically everything now. So our services have become pivotal in everyone's life now. Yeah, that's one of the things I was uh, going to ask about is the, I guess, this level of service changing. You mentioned now with all the, the streaming, the uh, internet of things and smartphones. 
has that made you think differently about how you market to people now then? Yes, for sure we need to you know address these topics also in the in our communication campaigns. Uh, in particular in digital campaigns uh, where we have the possibility to target uh, more precisely our our um, potential customers. That's really interesting. interesting. And I think if we look at um, digital transformation, it's really there and designed to ensure operators can compete by being increasingly customer-centric and provide an innovative and agile digital service. I think what I find really interesting, Emiliano, is 67% of operators are actually struggling to adapt to the changing competitive landscape quickly enough. I mean, is this something you, you, you've seen in Italy with your competitors then? People aren't, I guess, looking around them quick enough. Uh, yeah, they are. I mean, the, the market is uh, more fluid now and uh, uh, the change of operator is uh, happening more frequent. Uh, uh, the market is also polarized uh, between uh, two groups of operators, I would say. Uh, the ones, uh, you know, with a uh, higher reputation and uh, structure and others uh, smaller, cheaper, uh, more agile in providing uh, um, basic services to their customers. Uh, so for sure, if you want to compete with, I mean, for us as Vodafone, if you want to compete with these kind of players, uh, you need to be more agile and, and adapt more quickly to, to, to changes in the, in the competitive scenario. Yeah, and with that sort of thing, does it become a race to the bottom with price, or do you have to, I guess, be cleverer with how you position yourself online, especially with digital campaigns? Well, it's always uh, tricky to go and, uh, uh, you know, bid on the price you make uh, customers pay. Um, I mean, as, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, every one of us now needs a reliable connection. So you, you want also this uh, aspect of your proposition to be comprehended by the, by the audience and to be appreciated and, I mean, uh, to make people willing to pay for it. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we're obviously all in a strange global pandemic right now. Uh, yeah, COVID, yeah. Uh, I mean, this situation was crazy. I mean, everyone, everyone had uh, at some point some issues, some troubling uh, in connecting, uh, in uh, keeping uh, the, the, the video conference alive uh, or, uh, or such. So. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I, I, I uh, had a very similar problem early on in, uh, in lockdown when I was working from my home on the Zoom call. My wife was working at home on a Zoom call, and we were homeschooling yeah. with my son on a Zoom call. And we didn't have enough uh, internet or Wi-Fi for uh, a, a normal house. So we, I've yeah. definitely experienced that, and uh, it does make you realise that it's really important to have a good level of service and look at what else is out there. So uh, I think yeah, we've all been had those issues ourselves. Yeah, I think um, what was a good place to go is now. Is to, I guess really have a, a kind of a more deep dive into the main entry pain points, and especially within the data marketing industry, there's kind of three key, key areas we could look at. In the first one really being, I guess, data. That, you know, let, let's start with, um, you know, I guess one of the big issues really is, you know, what are the main data challenges for the telecommunication industry, uh, Emiliano, in your viewpoint? Yes, what, what, what I experienced, uh, what uh, my team and I experienced in these last uh, couple of years, uh, uh, my team is quite new, uh, so we all arrived uh, uh, about the same time uh, in, in Vodafone, and uh, is that it was really difficult to, to um, uh, actually evaluate uh, uh, the performances of our campaigns. And that's because uh, what we generate as, uh, well, think uh, the basics, so website traffic. Okay, you do digital campaigns, you want people to land on your website, but what next? Uh, you have uh, different acquisition channels, so basically assisted ones and unassisted ones. So if uh, uh, a certain percentage of customers decide to per complete the purchase online, that's I mean, uh, super okay, it, it's also a saving for the company, uh, but most of the people yeah. don't. Most of the people want to go through a call center, want to speak to someone, want to uh, be contacted by an operator that can explain in, in more detail 
what they are going to purchase, what are the pros, what are the cons, what are the, I don't know, if, uh, possible uh, uh, hidden uh, stuff <laughs> behind the contract. Uh, so <laughs> that, that same lead that you spend uh, money to generate uh, afterward uh, goes through a number of possible call centers, a number of possible provisioning systems. Uh, you, For instance, uh, for the fixed broadband line uh, uh, you want to install at your home, if you purchase it, uh, you need a guy to come to your house, uh, make an appointment, come, come to your house and install it, I mean, with the cable. So it's not an easy um, acquisition process and uh, we we lack um, uh, the 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 tool to measure the actual performance, which is a paradox. Because uh, I mean, we we work in the digital marketing. We have we work with cookies. We have a super high data granularity, and we cannot uh, complete the end-to-end -end, uh, evaluation process. And that wow. was uh, painful. Yeah, it sounds. I mean. I guess you, you need to synchronize um, CRM systems with call centers and installation companies as well as the digital campaigns then? Yes, yes, all the systems uh, involved. Uh. Well, and I, I guess it, it, it becomes quite time consuming and, and expensive way of um, looking at it then. Yes, uh, it, uh, you can try and do that uh, without a proper data infrastructure underneath. Uh, and that's time consuming, or you can uh, uh, give up uh, in a way and uh, just estimate uh, your performances, but that would be uh, a non-precise way of planning that uh, uh, will not enable you to um, optimize your campaign and you know to spend the budget in the most efficient way to maximize uh, sales. And and when you're kind of capturing data, um, where, where do you find um, are the most, I guess, from an acquisition viewpoint, the best channels? Is it the digital channels? Is it social channels? Where do you find people searching um, for the best deal? It's a super complex journey. Again, uh, I mean, you're signing a contract that links you to the company for uh, minimum uh, uh, two years. So I, I wouldn't say it's like buying, buying a car, of course, uh, but uh, I mean, you cannot evaluate uh, uh, only one channel at a time. You need to evaluate the strategy as a whole. That's, that's, that's pretty interesting. I think you mentioned kind of moving on from the data. One of the, the key challenges is systems and, and the challenge around that is actually how do you compile it? And, and actually get an end-to-end -end process. Uh, I mean, wh wh I guess, what are the major kind of top three areas really within system challenges and how do you connect it to the data? Well, of course, for us, uh, our uh, CRMs, our systems, uh, e these are, are an asset for a company like Vodafone. We, uh, we consider uh, the, the, the data of our customers to be sacred uh, and untouchable. And that's, uh, I mean, uh, we need to guarantee that. Um, so the, uh, the the key to to be able to get uh, just uh, a bit of this information, uh, which are some um, uh, anonymous IDs uh, that allows us to link uh, the purchase, which is inside Vodafone system, to the online activity of that cookie, that customer. Um, so we don't need anything more. We don't need uh, phone numbers. We don't need addresses. We don't need the payment methods. We don't need anything. We just need to know if that single ID has become a sale or not. So uh, what, what's, what, what we're trying to, what, what, we, what we did, uh, the key to enter these systems was, were to, was to be able to speak with IT people and let them understand we didn't need uh, anything uh, PII, anything sensitive. Uh, so even those those systems are uh, closed and maybe sometimes really complex and stratified because many systems have been built in time one on top of the of the other. Uh, we were able to access that data with their collaboration, yeah, with our IT collaboration. Yeah, that's one thing I was going to talk about with I guess the IT collaboration. 
you know, the telecommunication industry has been around for a very long time. Do you often find that it, there's a lot of legacy systems in place and and systems are built upon systems systems which becomes very challenging to their Well, again, system may change. I mean, you ju you just need to be prepared for it. For mm, we we keep changing our provisioning systems. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, one piece of that uh, after six months, uh, one piece of another one. So you just need to be prepared and flexible to be able to um, uh, acquire the new format of the data uh, in a seamless way. Brilliant. And I guess once you kind of you, you, you pull the data, you've kind of got your systems in line. I guess the the next really big challenge um, for anybody, I guess, is reporting. Is you know how best you report, and you know what are some of the major challenges. Um, you know, it's manual. I guess the frequencies. Are you dealing with hundreds of spreadsheets? How do you deal with these these massive challenges then? Well, one of the main challenges. <laughs> I I had uh, I faced uh, was uh, when I spoke to a guy. He told me, "Yeah, but I don't want a dashboard. I I want to copy and paste the data daily because that's the only way I can monitor them. I can uh, understand those uh, those data, and I can uh, you know be aware of uh, something missing, something uh, changing, some system down. Uh, so the main challenge." Uh, to me, at least, uh, my experience, the main challenge have been, uh, <clears throat> has been uh, to um, provide people with uh, easy access to, to, to this kind of data, which are super complex. Uh, in, my job uh, uh, was to make them uh, um, more accessible in an easier way so they didn't have to go to that guy or that consultant because only he or she had access to that database. Uh, maybe go back after three hours to the extraction because the data wasn't what they what they what they meant to. So um, data democratization uh, was, was an issue. Um, and of course, uh, I didn't spoke about uh, the technical pain points here, which uh, which were uh, uh, as written here, as noted here in the slide, uh, the manuality of the data flow. Uh, so if one single number goes through four files because going and be shown to the stakeholder uh, or to the manager, that's not safe. Uh, and the updates frequency. So many people uh, wasting, uh, well, not wasting, but working many hours uh, to, to to provide uh, maybe three numbers, uh, three figures. Uh, those yeah. was, those were technical challenges. Yeah, I think it's something we hear quite a lot in Verity. The amount of people that spend, I believe, I believe personally, too much time pulling these reports together and putting them together to try and find it. And really not enough time analyzing what it means always because they're, they're having to do daily reports of people that are looking for specific numbers and a lot of copy and pasting so it's human error you know there's always a better way of doing things and i think especially looking at the data integrity it's really important to remove as much of the manual elements as possible which i think you know it's, it's a really good time to kind of bring us on to you know how to vodafone um, solve these challenges we, we mentioned before that um, you know, data is a massive issue in, in the industry. You know, looking at different systems is, is a problem, and then you know, putting the reporting. These are kind of three key areas that um, I think everybody within telecommunications suffers from. But so, how did Vodafone solve these challenges, Emiliano? Yeah, so we we use uh, we use that Verity to to be able to collect uh, all data from all different sources, uh, uh, where sources means uh, different platforms uh, we spend money on for digital marketing campaigns. Uh, so Facebook, Google, our media agency, uh, programmatic, uh, etc. The app server, and uh, we. Uh, we, we we found a way to col collect them uh, in a, an, um, in a scheduled way every night. Uh, so we have the data refreshed every night. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, up-to-date uh, insights in the morning. 
and that's just uh, you know for the campaign management part. Uh, but that uh, what, what was uh, uh, really uh, valuable to us uh, was the possibility so to transfer data in an ecosystem we could work on uh, to enrich those data, as I said before. So we work with our IT guys uh, to to be able to extract from our Vodafone system what was uh, um, what could uh, help us uh, measure actual uh, campaign performances. And um, uh, the, the good thing here is that uh, we, um, we created this ecosystem by ourselves. So we had uh, some skill, but none of us uh, is uh, uh, an engineer guy, uh, data engineer guy. So uh, we, uh, it was quite easy. After after we, we were able to get all the data in the same place, uh, to be able to merge them, to enrich them, uh, and you know to provide uh, um, stakeholders with uh, actual insights. Brilliant. And I, one of the things you touched on there was downloading data. You didn't have to repeatedly do it. It was something that's autonomous to you. How much did this kind of change your life, having it all in one place and being done for you? Well, um, it, it, didn't, it didn't much change. Uh, well, it didn't change my life, uh, also my life, but also that of the others, because uh, they didn't need to, you know, work with the three uh, Excel sheets open at once uh, and try to link uh, data that cannot be linked uh, manually. Uh, well can be linked manually, but this cannot be escalated. So it's a uh, download and link uh, of uh, data sources, different data sources. And this has saved up uh, a huge amount of time for the team. Brilliant, and did it give you, a, a, I guess, a, a better way to look at detailed data discrepancies and fine tune some of your measurements then by downloading this way? Yes. Yes, of course, uh, because you had the uh, sync uh, uh, natively, in a way, natively build uh, in, in, their, in this new ecosystem. And so you were able to detect uh, uh, sooner and, you know, in a faster way, issues, technical issues, tracking issues, uh, uh, discrepancies, duplicated tracking, etc. You mentioned earlier on in our kind of conversation about um, analysis and strategy and reporting to different stakeholders involving the business. Once you kind of ingest all that data into one place and you've automated that, you can start building different data models and different reportings. Has that changed, changed or adapted your marketing campaigns now? Well, this uh, uh, we we created a case for our uh, Vodafone group a uh, uh, couple of months ago. Thanks to this new infrastructure, to this new ecosystem uh, we created, uh, we were able to uh, have a, a higher conversion rate by 10 percentage points. This was huge for us. I mean, it made us save a lot of money. It made us. Uh, uh, reach the target in terms of sales for a couple of months, uh, which wasn't happening. I mean, hasn't been happening for six months, something like that. <laughs> so uh, it, it actually drove uh, immediately or almost immediately uh, actionable uh, uh, insights and directions for our strategy. And that was great. Uh, that was really appreciated by everyone, uh, everyone we work with. And uh, again, thanks to the flexibility, because we uh, we knew what was needed in terms of details for the data uh, to be shown to, to, to our managers, to our uh, stakeholders, uh, we were able to create tailored reports and reporting uh, suits, uh, in a way, to different uh, people. Uh, to the, I mean, from, from the campaign uh, manager to the, uh, the PO of our team, uh, so that that's that's super useful now. And the, the and uh, more importantly, the the source of truth is the, the source of truth is uh, unique. So they are all looking at the same data, 
at the same database, uh, just with different granularity and different views. But the data is the same for everyone. Brilliant. So I guess it, um, it, it rules out, I guess, um, issues or I guess squabbling over is the data right or not. At least everybody's looking at the same data and it's now based on different analysis or opinion then. Well, of course, you have to go through the, the data check and the fine tuning of the process. That's something that, I mean, cannot be, avoid, cannot be avoided by anyone. And uh, uh, sometimes you are, I mean, right. <laughs> sometimes you are wrong. Sometimes there is an issue in the implementation of the new data flow you just created. Sometimes there isn't, and it's just another way to look at the same data. Uh, but it, it, it does have an explanation. And uh, if you have everything under control, if you know where everything goes and where every figure comes from, then you are able to provide that explanation. But if not, uh, you have to go back in the chain uh, of manuality and uh, find the guy who made the well possible mistake or that uh, uh, classified something in a certain way which is not what you had in mind, uh, so that it's, it's really time consuming. And now, I mean, you have uh, someone uh, uh, who can uh, uh, provide you with the answer if something uh, doesn't seem to be right uh, and clarify that. That's also important. I, I, I'm really glad you mentioned time consuming. It, it kind of brings me on to, I guess, my last point about one of the base benefits time and resource savings you know what did it mean to vodafone yourself and your team by saving this extra time and you know what what can you do differently well uh, we started this conversation uh speaking about the competitive scenario and that's something that people really uh really need to think about so find new ways new ways uh, to engage customers, potential customers in our case, uh, find uh, new ways to interact with them, uh, find better publishers, better um, partners that can be onboarded uh, in, um, in generating more sales, uh, additional incremental sales. Uh, um, use the time you free up uh, if you don't have to download data to uh, take a look of um, results from our um, divisions, maybe within Vodafone, uh, well, within the, the company in general. So if you have uh, some, uh, uh, I don't know, media guy who asked uh, some company to create an econometric model and you work all time on downloading data, you cannot, uh, maybe, you, you don't have time to look at that kind of insight because you you don't even see that pass in your mailbox but if you free up time then your curiosity go up and uh, you, you you can uh, you can find uh, the the energy to to get new ideas from other other uh, inputs really that's really useful and I, and i think i think kind of like highlighting some of the benefits you you received, you know, with working with Adverity and if other people listening that are, are looking for, you know, have similar problems in the telco industry, which Emiliano spoke about at the beginning, was that, you know, I think, you know, we've offered the data destination and flexibility of a single source of truth, which I think is really important to have, as Emiliano mentioned, have everything in one place. Everybody's looking at the same data. You know, I, th I feel that working with you guys has been brilliant because we've um, I think had a very quick and easy implementation team and we've also learned about both from each other how to improve things and move things forward but I think what's super important is you've retained ownership of your full data that you, that you own that and you can actually utilize it in a better position right now so I, I think you know there's different things you can do now now you own your own data where you can create your own data models you can actually be super flexible with harmonizing and transforming this data within the system to create different analysis and different strategies around your marketing strategy moving forward, which is again really good. But I, I think, you know, 
other things you need to look out for are you know, flexibility with automation. You know, can this be possibly done with different APIs? You know, can you personalize your own API connectivity and pull your own different reports? And are you able to you know, do big data fetches at once? I mean, I think one of the key things you, know, you, you can do now is you can pull historical data in all at once and actually start looking back at historical data looking forward in the future. I mean, these are kind of some of the key areas, I think, takeaways we've discussed so far. Is there anything else you think I've missed out on, uh, Emiliano, from some of the benefits you've, you've found so far? Well, I, I'd also mention the support team is great, uh, super responsive. Uh, uh, they solved many, many issues uh, in the last few months. Uh, so, great. Fantastic. And, uh, yeah, if everybody listening you know, who wants to kind of get a clearer picture of what Adverity does and offers uh, uh, our customers and, pros and prospects is, as you can see, you know, on one side of it, we have out-of-the-box connectivity, where we can actually pull different data sources and data streams into Adverity. And that's part of this. Once you have all your data in one place, which Emiliano mentioned, it's then really important about look at data governance and quality and actually transform and harmonize that data so it all means the same, so you're all looking at the same bits of data. And once you've done that and you can actually manipulate the data and pull different reports and analysis, it's about pushing it to the right places and actually pushing it to different, different visuals and actually see what that actually means. So hopefully, you know, if anybody else is listening that wants any further information, by all means, please reach out to myself uh, around this or look, go to our, at adverity.com, our website, and you can see in more detail um, Vodafone's case study as well, but further information around what Adverity does. And, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Emiliano for... The great work, kind words you said about um, Adverity today, but also your really important insights into the telecommunication industry and some of the major pain points which everybody goes through, whether it be in the telco industry or other industry. You know, there are three key areas when it comes to data, systems, and reporting. So thank you for that, and thank you for the guys at your consultancy and, and Jim for moderating so far. Back to you, mate. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Jim, for inviting me. Um, okay, um, well, it's been... It's been a fascinating dis discussion today. Thank you both, Sam and Emiliano. Um, just to recap, some of the things that we discussed was just the sheer complexity of the customer journey in the case of Vodafone customers, but generally in telecoms as well, given the fact that it can be a big decision. Like it's like like Emiliano said, it's not just buy. It's not like buying a car, but you are signing on for a two-year contract in many cases, and there are a lot of touch points that consumers actually engage with on the path to conversion. Uh, and it's, there's the need to be able to have a, a clear, holistic view of the entire customer journey across these touch points to be able to coordinate and understand campaign effectiveness. Um, Emiliano and, and Sam was talking about the, the, the how time consuming this can be without having the right systems in place. Um, and it can be a certainly very expensive uh, pursuit uh, without the proper structures. Um, and of course, there are ways around this uh, for those that are, that are trying to sort of fill in the gaps uh, with estimations, but it's not always precise and you can't always optimize uh, the ROI off the back of that. Um, now, we also talked about um, the reporting challenges uh, which lie behind this um, and how Liano at Vodafone has been very much focused on data democratization, um, whereas it previously it might have been centered on uh, one or two very busy individuals. Um, and having the right systems in place has really helped Vodafone because it empowered teams so they could spend more time actually on analyzing the implications of the data, not just devoting resources to pulling the data, uh, which is so often the case before the right systems were in place. Now, one of the things I found particularly interesting was uh, thanks to the platform that uh, Vodafone invested in uh, through Verity, um, they didn't necessarily need to be engineers to create the ecosystem. Um, and what they did enabled them to collect data from different platforms that really helped them better understand uh, the effectiveness of their campaign strategy. Uh, and one of the things that really stuck out for me was how quick the impact uh, that was generated. Um, I thought it was quite stunning that uh, uh, Vodafone was able to increase conversion rates by t percentage points. Um, and also, you know, the main strategic point was also being able to communicate this uh, to the key stakeholders and senior management because you had a single source of truth 
Uh, and that way the whole business could align around the strategy uh, and also the necessary investments that might be required. And then finally, we talk a little bit more about some of the reasons uh, why this was such a success. And one of those being the time and resource savings that were made by having the right systems in place to actually uh, report on the data. Um, and that enabled uh, Vodafone and stakeholders to be more creative uh, in thinking about the wider customer strategy uh, as Juliana related to it, potentially to uh, think about new ways to engage and interact with customers and find better publishers to generate more incremental sales. Um, so overall, I found that fantastic. It's great to see, um, see the ROI that, that was that was generated. So it's a very good story. Um, and this, this one goes to you, Sam. This, this question came in uh, just now. Um, obviously, clearly, there's been some you know, significant impact on, on Vodafone's business and operations. Are there any, uh, you know, one of the questions that was coming from another, and what, what about sort of the impact on other industries? Have you got any examples there that you can relate to? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a great question. That obviously, we're talking about telecommunications day as a, as a vertical. We, we work across Every vertical, really, you know, from uh, agencies directly to brands from some of the largest companies in the world to some of the more niche and unusual. We actually uh, have signed a company uh, today that do, does a Fitbit for dogs, which is really interesting. And they're looking at new ways to actually look at the digital campaigns and the effectiveness of their ROI. Uh, so I think for us, anybody that, um, I guess, is looking at huge amounts of data or, or small amounts of data when it comes to different campaigns from offline marketing to digital and social online marketing. And what's a better way to view that and understand and analyze it? They're the perfect customer for us. And, you know, we, we're really proud to work with all sorts of companies um, and sizes because we really do believe it helps people. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Sam. Um, and this this one came in from Emiliano. Um, now you mentioned before, uh, Emiliano, that um, that having um, a single source of truth was really great for alignment when it comes to an understanding of, of the data and the campaign effectiveness. Uh, did it have a, a wider cultural impact? So obviously, uh, when it comes to telecoms, you know, the key thing is to be agile and, and breaking out uh, breaking out from silos. Do you think it sort of brought uh, teams together much more closely than it had done in the past? Yeah, on one, on one side, uh, of course, but that's a general trend, I would say. So digital marketing in general is getting more attention and is required for more results, uh, tangible results, measurable results. Um, but on the other side, if you have the right infrastructure in place, you can also demonstrate and prove that your activity impacts some other acquisition and um, consumer behaviors like uh, in-store sales, in-store purchases, um, or that that kind of uh, you know um, additional purchases. You, you don't you don't you don't, you aren't able to measure in another way. So pros and cons that enables you to be uh, more reliable and that's a pro for sure but also to use your activity as a leverage for uh, having an impact on also other divisions which aren't necessarily digital sales okay great great answer that's that's really good um, and one more one more question uh, came out of the obviously all the extra time that uh, you had and you mentioned that um, this afforded uh, Vodafone the chance to uh, identify new ways to engage and interact with customers. Were there any particular uh, examples there you can relate to? Um, well, we are implementing uh, some uh, uh, some other uh, ways for customers to leave a lead and to be contacted by our call centers, uh, which isn't necessarily on our website. And uh, we couldn't have done that uh, without an infrastructure, again, flexible, that could uh, uh, ingest those kind of inputs, those kind of data, and be able to link them back to, the, to our spend, our investment. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I've got one final question. Obviously, it seems that um, uh, Emiliano, you and, the, you and the teams worked very, very worked very well with the IT guys uh, to extract relevant data from Vodafone systems. 
would you say having the right tools in place actually made the relationship with IT even better? Has, has your has that, uh, closer as, as, as a result? Well, uh, you need uh, someone that can be able to speak their language in a way, and uh, you need to be able to receive uh, their effort uh, and to exploit the most out of them. Uh, if you want everything perfect uh, as they as they are in charge of creating a PowerPoint of some slides, you cannot for sure interact with them uh, in a constructive way. You need to be prepared for them to give you what they can, and then you build on top of that. Okay. Well, thanks. Um, thanks very much for that. Um, well, um, those um, those are the questions that came in. Um, if I think what we'll do now is wrap up. I just wanted to thank Sam um, Emiliano for sharing the great insights, um, and um, and um, I'd like to 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 just all all I've, all I've got to do now is remind you all that the link to the recording will be shared within the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, and thanks again very much to our presenters. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. It's been a, a great conversation chat.